हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द पोल साइंस क्लास ऑफ ट्वेल्व आर्ट्स एंड टुडे वी विल प्रोसीड विद द रिमेनिंग ऑर्गन्स ऑफ द यूनाइटेड नेशंस प्रीवियसली वी हैड रीड अबाउट द जनरल असेंबली इन एन एलेबोरेटिव वे इफ यू रिमेंबर दैट वी हैड रीड दैट इट इज द मेन डेलीबरेट ऑर्गन एंड इट्स मीटिंग इज हेल्ड once a year and whatever the decisions are taken that is taken by two third of majority then whatever the president is elected which is the head of general assembly it is elected from among whatever the member states are there under the un the president is elected from there only after that we had also read about that the first session or you can say the first meeting of the general assembly was held on 10th january 1946 in london clear west minster central hall and how many nations were present at that meeting 51 after that we read about the security council having its headquarters in new york clear we have read that what is the work main functions related to security council that work is like maintaining peace and security along with that it also has the power to bind decisions that means for the member nations it is binding decisions and the member nations will abide by what the un charter clear then we have read about who are the permanent members five permanent members are there namely usa britain france russia and china they are permanent members and apart from that 10 non permanent members are there and this 10 permanent non permanent members are elected for a period of 2 years and i have also told you about that india recently was included in the month of june as a non permanent member of the united nations security council after that lastly we read that the permanent members of the un security council have the power of veto that means they can give negative vote if they don't wish to pass any laws then they can do what any one member from the five permanent members can give a veto vote so today we will proceed with the third organ that is the secretariat so regarding secretariat it has its headquarter in new york so that means the third organ has also the headquarter situated in new york only the united nations secretariat is headed by the secretary general assisted by a staff of international civil servants worldwide so in the beginning what it is written that the un united nations secretariat is actually headed by whom the secretary general and he is again assisted by a staff of international civil servants worldwide that means he is the head after that he is again helped or assisted by whom by all the civil servants that are present worldwide that means it may be from india also it may be from russia also it may be from other countries also so all the civil servants that are from different places in the world and who are also the member states under the un they assist or help the secretary general of the united nations secretariat it provides studies information and facilities needed by the united nations bodies for their meeting and what is their function number one is that it provides what the secretariat provides studies information sorry studies then information and facilities needed by the united nations bodies for their meeting so they are providing all this thing to whom all the united nations bodies and they are providing this studies information and facilities to these bodies for their meeting purpose for the purpose of meeting remember this it also carries out tasks as directed by the U united nations security council the un general assembly the un economic and social council and the other un bodies so apart from providing studies 
information and facilities to all the United Nations bodies, whoever the bodies are there, for their meeting purpose actually they are providing these studies, information and facilities. Apart from that, it also carries out what? Tasks. It also carried out some task or work. This task or work are given by whom or directed by? That may be given by the UN Security Council also, that may be given by the UN General Assembly also or the UN other bodies are also there of the UN or that can be from UN Economic and Social Council also. So they have to carry out those tasks that are directed to them by the United Security Council or the United Nations General Assembly or the UN Economic and Social Council or maybe other UN bodies present also. The United Nations Charter provides that the staff be chosen by Application of the highest standards of efficiency, competence and integrity. That means what does the United Nations Charter provides actually. This provides, this says that the staff be chosen by the application of the highest standards of efficiency, competence and integrity with due regard for the importance of recruiting on a worldwide geographical basis. That means whoever the staffs are chosen Suppose say that Secretary General or the President or you can say the staff of the international civil servants worldwide are there who actually helps or assist to the Secretary General in terms of work that is there in the Secretariat. They are again chosen following what are the criteria actually to choose all these staffs. This should be chosen by number one is the highest standards of efficiency. That means that particular staff should be of high standard in terms of their efficiency. They should be very efficient. Then second criteria is that they should be competence. Clear? And they should also maintain the integrity. Clear? These three things are being observed while the staffs are chosen and giving due regard for the importance of recruiting on a world geographical basis and while choosing they apart from looking in the efficiency competence and the integrity they also look after what that whatever the number of staffs are selected they should be selected on the basis of what on a wide geographical basis that means that should cover like staff should be uh, elected or selected from all over the world that means how many member countries are there suppose 193 so that staff should be recruited on the basis of that only clear after that the charter provides the that the staff shall not seek or receive instructions from any authority other than the UN so whatever the staffs are there suppose I assume that the staff of international civil servants are assisting the secretary general so I am talking about this only that the staff which are related to international civil servants worldwide so as they are being appointed as the member of the United Nations or they are working under the secretariat so apart from listening to the United Nations they should not seek or receive any instructions from other sources suppose you assume that that staff will only work according to the instructions given by the United Nations and not from any other institution maybe or from any other country they will not they are not to seek or receive any instruction other than the UN clear after that each UN member country is enjoined to respect the international character of the secretariat and not seek to influence its staff and apart from that each UN member that means in this line it is being observed that it is strictly being instructed to the UN member country. Suppose 193 member countries are there. Each UN member country is enjoined to respect the international character of the secretary. That means if there are 193 member countries under the UN, they should do what? They should respect the character or the international character of the secretary. The way the secretariat is working, they should respect that, all the member countries. And apart from respecting, they should also not seek to influence its staffs. So whatever the staffs are there under the secretariat, 
so this staff should not be influenced by any other mode by any member countries that are under the united nations clear after that the secretary general alone is responsible for staff selection so if the head is secretary general so this secretary general is alone responsible for staff selection so whatever the selection of staffs are made that is done by the secretary general alone the secretary general's duties include helping resolve international disputes administering peacekeeping operations organizing international conferences gathering information on the implementation on the security council decisions and consulting with member governments regarding various initiatives clear so apart from appointing the staff the secretary general's other duties are also there which includes what number 1 is the secretary general is helping to resolve international disputes suppose assume that if there is any dispute between any two or three countries so who will take the responsibility to resolve these international disputes between the countries the secretary general number 1 number one duty is to resolve international disputes then after that number two is he will administer he will or she will administer what peacekeeping operations whatever the operations are going on related to the peacekeeping process that means he will look after all the peacekeeping operations that is going on he will look after all that thing after that thirdly he will organize he or she will organize international conference wherever and whenever required he will organize or he will urge for what doing conferences that will be done internationally through the meeting or discussions then fourthly he will gather information on the implementation of on the security council decisions then after that whatever the security council will take decisions he will gather all the information first that what are the decisions are there that is done by the security council and based on the information gathered through that he will implement he or she will implement or the secretary general will implement that and lastly he will he or she will do what he will consult with the member governments regarding various initiatives and after that lastly the secretary general will with all the member governments or you can say with member countries he will do what he will discuss and he will actually consult regarding various initiatives that he will discuss all the initiatives that are going on clear and he will discuss all this and he will consult also with all the member governments so the secretary general apart from appointing does what number 1 resolve helps to resolve international disputes then he or she the secretary general will administered peacekeeping operations number 2 the number 3 will organize international conferences the number 4 gather information of the security council and after gathering information will implement and last but not the least consulting with the member governments regarding various initiatives after that the secretary general may bring to the attention to the security council any matter that in his or her opinion may threaten international peace and security and after that he will do what he can bring attention of the security council then that means that the secretariat will put forward some suggestions or advices regarding any international threat is going on suppose there may be any international disputes that may lead to a war like situation so in this case what the general what the secretariat will do if war like situation is going to arise then he will he or she will do what he will he or she will inform the security council on the matter of this threaten that can lead to war clear he or she can highlight this point because a war like situation will destroy what all the peace and security of all the countries present in the world so he can concern he can raise the matter which is threatening uh, which, or which is giving way to a war like situation in the minds of the security council clear so here you can see it is the united nation secretariat building 
at the United Nations headquarters in the New York City. By the picture you can see, the headquarters of the Secretariat building looks like this. Clear? After that comes the fourth organ that is the Trusteeship Council and it also has its headquarters in New York. So about Trusteeship Council, it aims helping countries under foreign rule to attain independence. What is the work of Trusteeship Council? That whoever countries are there, if that particular country is under any foreign rule, then Trusteeship Council will do what? It will help that particular country in getting independence. Any country that is under foreign rule, it will help that particular country and it will help them to gain independence from that country. There were 11 such countries that had come under this system after the Second World War. So when it was established, the Trusteeship Council, and its main work was to do what? To help the particular country to gain independence. So at that time when it was formed, there were 11 such countries that had come under this system after the Second World War. After the Second World War, there were 11 such countries that were under the foreign rule. By 1994, all trust territories had attained independence. And by 1994, all of the foreign, that means by the year 1994, all countries became independent in the world. Clear? The last to do was the Palau, which became the 185th, mem 185th member state of the UN. And the last country to be freed from the foreign rule was Palau clear it is the name of the country and this particular country became the 185th member state of the UN clear so regarding short question it might come that under the trusteeship council which country that was under the foreign rule which was the last country that became the member so you have to write that the country's name was Palau and it became the 185th member state of the UN. Clear? So with this I will wind up today's topic. So before winding up we will do a quick revision regarding what we have learned today. We have learned today about the secretariat we have started from the General Assembly and the second organ was Security Council. Today we read about the third organ that was Secretariat. Clear? We read about the Secretariat and what was the work related to Secretariat as we read that it provides studies, information and facilities needed by the United Nations bodies for their meeting. Apart from that, they also carries out tasks. That means apart from providing studies, information and facilities, they also carry out certain tasks that are given to them by whom? Number one, UN Security Council. Number two, General Assembly. Number three, United Nations Economic and Social Council and other UN bodies if there are. So they also give them task and when they are assigned some task, they carry out the task that are given to them by various bodies of the UN. Clear? After that, we read about the Secretary General's duties. What he is what is the duty of the Secretary General? He has lots of responsibilities and duties. Starting from first, he appoints the staff. Secondly, he helps in resolving international disputes. Thirdly, he administers peacekeeping operations. Then, he or she organizes international conference. Next, he gathers information on the implementation. That means whatever the implementation are done by the security councils, decisions are there regarding in implementation he regards all the informations regarding that apart from that 
he or she also consult with the member governments regarding various initiatives that are taken worldwide after that lastly he also he or she also brings attention to the security councils mind that if there are any disputes or that disputes is led, leading to a war like situation and it is also threatening to the peace and security of the world so this things may be brought to the attention of the security council clear and lastly we read about the trusteeship council that the main work related to the trusteeship council was what was that whoever the countries are there under foreign rule they will help the particular country in attaining independence so after war, second world war there were 11 such countries which the trusteeship council was successful in making them independence so by 1994 all the territories or countries became independent the last country to gain independence was the palau and it became the 185th member state of the united nations clear so i think that whatever the organs we discussed today namely the secretariat and the trusteeship council it is now clear to you so with that i will wind up today's topic Thank you.